Whoa! <laughs> Welcome to Mother Mike's Garage. Whew, that was a crazy entrance. Now today I'm excited because we're gonna do something that is not only fun and interesting, but it's also highly, highly dangerous. I'm gonna show you how to hotwire this here lawnmower, this Cub Debt GT 2544 year 2000 model. Now, the way I do this will apply to pretty much any lawnmower, or even if you're trying to hotwire a car, semi-truck, truck, snowmobile, three-wheeler, two-wheeler, dirt bike, whatever you're playing with, this will probably apply. Because I'm not to be like the other hot wiring videos out there on the internet on lawnmowers. I'm gonna show you how to hotwire it directly from the key switch to the starter. Now, what does that do, those of you smart ones out there, that bypasses every single safety switch that is designed on this lawnmower to keep you safe as you mow the yard. So, just please, if you are using this lawnmower to cut the grass, if you have a deck on it and you're going to spin those blades, do not do this because there are some very, very safety, very, very important safety switches on these lawnmowers that could save your life because if you fall off the lawnmower, for some reason you start it and it keeps going and you're not there, it can just keep on mowing with nobody on it. And what happens then? Then it flips over and cuts your head off, cuts your arm off, cuts your finger, your foot off, you know, kills your dog, slices the baby's hand off, all sorts of bad things are happening. So don't do this if you're going to cut with it. But for the rest of you <laughs> rednecks out there and like me, if you want to do something else besides cutting the yard with these lawnmowers, which there's tons of applications. This one specifically, I'm going to turn into like a little mini tractor. So I want to get rid of all those safety switches anyway, so that way I can operate it like a tractor. Or maybe you just want to use it as a go-kart or something to cruise around and drink your tall boys at the RV park and just look cool and impress those ladies. Then follow me. I'm going to show you how to do it uh, the most efficient way I know possible. Now. Why am I doing it to this lawnmower specifically? Let me show you what I ran into. Now, I think I'm pretty good at fixing lawnmowers, but this old Cub Cadet, she's got an issue that I just can't quite figure out. So I got a new battery on her, and she, she starts great. Look at this. Cranks, but it won't stop cranking. I get off it. It won't stop cranking. Click, 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 nothing. I have no idea why this lawnmower is doing this. So I've got to get on here. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Woo! It'll start to <laughs> get you excited every single time. So I don't know why it's doing that, but we're going to bypass everything. <laughs> that way, so it'll start when you turn the key correctly. So stay with me, and I'm going to show you how these starting systems work, and then we're going to show you how to bypass the whole kit and caboodle. Now, before we start having more fun shocking ourselves and splicing wires into places that they should never be spliced on a lawnmower, I'm gonna to describe to you at a very simple level how the ignition system works on a riding lawnmower. And this will apply to any lawnmower starting from probably 1996, the current day. They all have the same ignition switch, the same type of wiring, generally. So, now <laughs> you've got a little, a little background here in the Mar Mike studio. You can see we've got a very complex lighting situation. We got some tools laid out, got the hood pulled off. Got my pull-up bar up there, but anyways. All right, so zooming in underneath here. I've got the battery pulled out, and I've actually got the ignition switch pulled out from the dash, just to show you real simply. Now, when you go to start your lawnmower, your ignition switch is all the way to the left. When it's to the left, you're gonna have power going to that switch. One of these wires feeds power to the switch. You turn it once, it does something. Turn it twice, probably turns the lights on. Turn it that last time, vroom, 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 vroom. That's what starts it. Now, when you turn it that last time, you've got that resistance. What it does, it's making a connection from that power to a separate wire, and it allows power to go down that starter wire. Now, on a riding lawnmower, that power does not go straight to the starter. What it does is that it goes through several safety switches before you can actually have the power go to the to the starter. So it shoots power at the speed of electricity or light, however fast it goes, goes through some safety switches. For sure, it goes through the one on the brake to make sure you have the brake down when you start it because they don't want you rolling downhill. It's got one to the seat and make sure you're sitting on the seat. Uh, also probably has one going to the blade engager to make sure the blade is disengaged and the newer ones probably have more safety switches. So what it does, it follows that wire, goes boom, 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 
as long as all those safety switches are closed, then it shoots power all the way down. And on this lawnmower here, you've got your starter solenoid, which is right here, and then you've got your starter. The way this works is that you have a trigger wire that goes to the starter solenoid. The starter solenoid is what provides the power to the starter. Ignore that wire for now. So this is our trigger wire. Now the big wire here, this actually goes straight to the battery. This goes straight to the starter. And what this starter solenoid is, it's just a giant switch. So when you get the trigger wire, which is that wire that feeds from the switch, when you turn it all the way to the right after it goes through all the safety switches, it opens this connection between here, or actually it closes it and allows power to go from here to the starter. And that's why you have that resistance because you only want it for a minute while it starts and then it starts up. So the key to bypassing everything is to find out how do we wire directly from our trigger wire all the way to the switch. So that's gonna be today's lessons. Now I know a lot of you are looking at this thing saying, hey, this does not look like anything on my lawnmower. That is because this is a shaft driven Cup Cadet from probably 1999. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm just gonna run out to my Mower Mike's junkyard and show y'all some more regular, I don't think that's a word, some more typical uh, starter solenoids on lawnmowers, just so you know what you're looking at, because typically they don't have these giant car starters on them. So stay with me. All right, we're gonna take a walk through Mower Mike's junkyard. Wow, look at that classic. That there is a 1985 Honda Big Red 250ES, one of my first builds a long time ago. Anyways, so what we're looking for, this is your typical starter solenoid on a lawnmower. It's gonna have one wire that goes to the starter, one wire up top that goes to the battery. Then you can have one or two down here. Now one of these is gonna be your hot trigger wire. If you have two, one's gonna be a hot trigger wire and a negative cable, a negative ground right here. So we want to find out where this is at on a lawnmower. What do we got over here in the woods? Ah, we got an old John Deere's, an L120. Now typically on your John Deere's, they're real handy. This one's been stripped off, but typically you'd find it right there, right next to the battery, super easy. What do we got here? <laughs> Boy, this is a mess, right? What we got here is an old Toro. Now the Toros and some of the other ones they don't have, if you don't see them right there behind the engine, a lot of times they're gonna be here underneath the seat, which is kind of a pain in the butt to get to. But let's see if we can zoom in and uh, take a look. Oh, there she is right there, starter solenoid. And what it is, you can take the battery out and you usually, you can see right there, there's a couple bolts behind the seat. Now on, what we got here? Oh, we got an old school Gravely. Now on your zero turns, a lot of times, they're just gonna be behind the seat. They'll be real accessible. This one, I have no idea. And we got some other stuff hanging out. All right, so that's where they're at. Again, you're just looking for that starter solenoid. And if you can't find it, just uh, find it. It's really not that hard. All right, so with that, we're gonna go back in the shop and uh, keep on rolling. All right, now that we know all the basics of how it works and the location of the different devices, we're gonna have some fun and start playing with some electricity. So strap on in. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to get to your switch, and specifically you need to find the connector to the back of the switch. Now what I found is, you know, just take the switch off, or take the connector off. If you want to remove the switch totally, which you're gonna to have to do eventually anyways, I can see the switch, it's got these two prongs on the side. What you need to do is somehow get behind the dash panel on the lawnmower, squeeze those prongs and push up. And it'll pop out towards where the lawnmower seat is and you can just pull it out. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is find which of these little prongs is hot. That's our first step. All right, so the easiest way to do that, I believe, is with a light tester. So what this does is when you connect that prong or the little the tip of that to electricity, when it has 12 volts, it's gonna, we're gonna have a red light in there. And this little deal here, you plug this onto some sort of ground. So I'm just gonna take this clip, put it on the negative terminal, of the battery, like so. Come on, get on there. All right, and then we just go through and find which one is hot. Let's see if we can get it for the camera angle so we can get the good light. All right, we start down there and see no hot, no, up, uh, up. Uh, there it is right there, that's the hot one. Now you can see the little light comes on and the rest of them, you can see are not hot, not hot, not hot. But that one right there is the hot one. So the bottom left, right there. Now, we're gonna go ahead and make a mark 
on the connector. Bottom left one, that one's hot. All right. But also, you need to get a hold of your switch. Let's see if I can find my switcherooski. Where did I put you? All right. What we specifically need to do is find which of those prongs is hot on here. So if you match it up, do, 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 do. It's this one. This is the one that's going to be hot. And you can also double check it with the prongs going into the switch. Let's see. I think it's that one right there. Because you can leave a little bit hanging out there. I can see right there, it's hot. All right, so the big deal is don't forget <laughs> which one of these is hot on the switch. All right, so it is the bottom left. And what I'm going to do is see it's B. I'm going to go ahead and put a little orange mark so we know that one's hot. All right, so the next step is we need to find when you turn that switch all the way to the right, which one is it connecting to feeding that hot to which one of these is the starter and feeding the starter. So what I need, I need to go get some help and have somebody turn the switch so we can test it and figure out which one's going to be our hot wire feeding the actual engine. So hang on. All right. So the next thing we need to do, we need to take the switch and what we need to do is find when it's starting, when you turn it all the way to the right, like so, to the right, we've got the hot wire, but what is that switching on when you turn it all the way to the right? And in order to do that, what you need is a multimeter right here. So you can see right here, and where I set it, I set it on the ohm reading, on the ohm reading, oh, the light right there. So 200K OHM, and what that does, that is testing continuity. So that test continuity that the electricity is flowing. All right, I got my fancy ohm meter stand here. Come on. All right, so as you can see, when you put your two prongs together, boom. All right, so as we turn that switch all the way to the right, we're going to want to see where it makes a connection. All right, so for this, I've got a hand model hired in specifically for YouTube. I called up YouTube and they hire them, 50 bucks an hour. All right, so we see right there, we've got our orange mark. That's the one that's hot to the switch. Now let's find, all right, now turn it all the way to the right there. Yep. All right, you can see nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Oh, but there it is, right there. So this one right here is where we want to wire. All right, you can let go now. <laughs> See, I've already put an S right there. So we know when you're in the starting mode that we want to splice in the wire that feeds this prong into the starter, and that way it's going to start, and we're going to bypass all the different safety switches, and we'll go straight to the source. All right, so <laughs> stay with me. Next, we'll start splicing in there. All right, now it is time to start playing with some electricity. We have figured out which wire we want to hot wire. It's the S on here, which feeds to right here. And what I've got, I've got this orange wire, and I've gone ahead and cut it. Now, previously, I've spliced in both sides of the orange wire, but when you do that, some funny things happen because you're still getting power going back to these safety switches. So my suggestion is to just handle, cut it. Don't worry about where it went. Just worry about what came right off the switch right here. Now, so what we need to do, we need to splice this wire down into the starter to hit that trigger wire that we talked about initially. So down there. Now I found one of the best ways to do this when you're just testing electricity. What I like using, hang on, stay with me, is banana clips. I got these real fat ones off the Amazon and it's really cool you can clip them on there and just see if it's gonna work before you actually commit yourself. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and banana clip <laughs> one side right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and wheel on down here to our starter. Get you boys some light so we can see what's going on here. All right, you see our starter. And then we're gonna just go ahead and touch it first, make sure nothing crazy happens. <laughs> we're gonna clip it right there. All right, so this is some uh, redneck engineering. We're gonna see if this works or not. So let's go back up to our starter. See, we got her clipped in. So we know we've got hot coming to the starter and we know when we turn it to the right, hot is gonna be come flying down this wire through this banana clip to the starter. So does it work? Let's see here. Get my big old fat fingers. <laughs> yes, sir, you hear that? All right, so I think we have a winner. So what we do now, we take the banana clip off and next we wanna get a wire to splice in there. Now I've gone ahead and ran 
this black wire down to the starter. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take a wire nut. Just keep it simple. Just go ahead and wire nut her on there. <laughs> oh, wire nuts. Wire nuts are fun. Fun to say. All right, make them tight. And you can put some electrical tape around there if you're a little more concerned, which you probably should. So, but for this video, we are just going basic, basic, basic. All right, and then down here, what we got ourselves is, hang on. So I've taken the end of that wire and put one of these little clips on right here. And that way we can slide it right over the trigger wire. So now we should be set and uh, very, very cool. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and make this look right and we're gonna see how she starts. All right, now we're ready for the final test. We're gonna see if we get this old girl to start up for me. Now, just so you know, it's taken a lot of work to get this engine running before I even showed you how to jerry-rig up the electrical system. So we're gonna go ahead and get her started and then uh, see how she works. Being a 25-year-old Cub Cadet, she takes a lot more work than your usual John Deere. All right, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Woo, she took a little bit, but I tell you what, she is running awesome. Now, again, just for safety, please, if you're running the deck, if you're spinning blades, don't do this. But if you're not, just, hey, have fun with it. And also, everything I used in this video, from the tools to the multimeters to these banana clips, even down to the little uh, electrical connection I used down there in the starter, I'm just going to list Amazon links below where you can get your own, even the uh, electrical tape. So that's it. And if you guys are wondering, like, what is this little thing on top of that motor. What that is, that's a little one inch K&N filter because this motor had so much blowback, it was blowing the dipstick straight out of the motor. So that's just a little extra breather we had to add on her because she's losing a little compression. Anyways, all right, so that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave me comments, tell me I'm an idiot, tell me this is wrong, tell me you liked it, whatever. But with that, more mics out and we've got some more projects we're gonna work on around the shop here. Talk to you later. <laughs> so this is my first attempt at it. And I have done something horribly wrong in my wiring, but at the same time, something really cool happened. Check this out. So I'm not even going to sit on the lawnmower. What we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the choke out. Come on, choke out, turn it the right one time, and watch this. I'm not even gonna sit on it. I'm not gonna touch anything. All we're gonna do is do one foot on the brake. <laughs> Yes, that is crazy. So I'm just going to dip back in and figure out what I did because we don't want that happening to push the brake and the starter comes on. So let's try again.